everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. Today we're going to start a series on tool offsets and work offsets. I think this subject probably gives people the most heartburn when they're starting out running a CNC machine. There's a few different ways to do work offsets and tooling offsets. Each one of them has their pros and cons, and each one of them can apply to your situation differently. I'm going to do three videos on this. Each video will focus on a slightly different method of doing work offsets and tooling offsets. To really take advantage of tooling offsets, though, you need to have tool holders that will hold your tools and locate them at the same position every time you take them in and out of your spindle. If you have an R8 collet machine, there are R8 collet tool holding systems out there that will allow you to do this with an R8 collet machine. To really take full advantage of all of our offsets and our tooling offsets, we need to use our machine's coordinate system. Every machine has a master machine coordinate system. This coordinate system needs to be set most of the time on power up depending on what type of machine you have. So let's go through the power up procedure for a Fidel VMC which you see behind me. First thing we need to do is turn on the main disconnect for the power. Then we'll press the green button to start up all the control circuitry. After that, on the screen, we'll see that the machine is asking the operator to jog it to the home position. One of the shutdown procedures for the Fidel machine is to send the machine to home, that's machine coordinate system home, after you're done using it before you power it down. If you do this, the axes will stay at that home position while the machine's powered off, and you shouldn't have to jog anything, you can just cold start the machine up. To jog the machine to its home position, there are indicators on the table that tell you where the home position is. You don't have to get these indicators absolutely perfectly aligned, you just have to align them within one rotation of the ball screw. When you tell the machine to perform a cold start, what it will do is it will look at the resolvers, which are the instruments used to measure the rotation of a ball screw, it will zero out the resolver registers and move the resolvers to their zero position. This will be considered the machine's home. It's a very accurate and repeatable system. The machine coordinate system is critical on these larger machines because that's how the machine knows where to move when it's changing tools. And then on the Fidel machines, there's no limit switches on any of the axis travel. So the machine home is used to apply soft limits in the controller so you don't bottom out any of the axis slides. Let's talk about the first way to perform work offset and tooling offset. Let's go to the machine. We're at our machine. Let's talk about the first method that's most commonly used by beginning CNC operators. It's very basic very simple and it's easy to understand. The tooling offset will be completely ignored in this work offset methodology. Typically your tool offset table will be zeroed out and the G43 command which applies a tool offset won't be used. What we will use is the G54 work offset coordinate system. To utilize this, we position the spindle to certain X, Y, and Z positions of where we want our zero position on our part to be. Then we set those offsets some, by using some means in our controller. To set the X and Y offsets, we're typically going to use an edge finder this will go in your spindle, turn, it will offset, and then as it turns, when it hits the edge of the part, it will go centered, and then if you go a little past, 
it will rub up against the part and then you'll see it walk out again. This is a very good low cost method of finding the edge of a part. With a little practice you can get repeatability on this under a thousandth of an inch and it only costs about ten bucks. Very good method, easy to use, perfect for people that are starting out. So we can use the edge finder if we want to set the X and Y zero to be the corner of this vice jaw. We can use our edge finder and find those points and then those will be entered in as work offsets in G54. You may or may not realize that you're entering in work offsets in G54 because by default your controller uses G54. So if you don't use any other work offsets other than that, it will always be on G54 and that's what you're manipulating when you're zeroing out your axes using this method. Then after our X and Y is set, we'll typically jog our tool down to our Z reference point, say it's the top of our jaw, so let's jog our Z down. Now there's different ways to set the Z height, some people will use a gauge block, some people use the paper method or shim stock method. I prefer to use a dowel pin or in this case an end mill shank. These shanks are ground very precise. I indicated this one out and this one is exactly .375 inches. So what I'll do is I'll take my, my dowel pin or end mill shank and I'll keep jogging the, the Z axis down and keep rolling it under until I can clear it and then I'll feel it hit as I get to the point where I want my Z height to be and then just add .375 inches to it. So this is a very accurate, easy, cheap way to set our Z height. So then when we get our Z to the zero point that we want it, we, we tell our machine, okay, the Z's at zero. So what it does is it takes where the Z height is and it enters that number into the G54 work offset coordinate. So now you have X, Y, and Z all zeroed on the corner of that vise. We can put our stock in and make our part. Now if we change tools, we're going to have to re-zero the tool length again. So if we were to use one of the other tools in, in the tool changer, we would have to stop the part, manually re-zero our part, and, and go on. Now if you don't have a tool changer and you just have a manual machine that you're going to put the tools in and out by hand, that's okay to do. So that's the very first method that people start out with when they're operating a CNC machine. It's, it's used a lot because it's easy to understand and it's easy to perform. However, it does have its drawbacks and those drawbacks will become apparent as you start machining more complex parts that require more tools and as you get more advanced in operation of the machine. The biggest drawback that that has, this, this method of, of work offset, is when I remove the vise, say I need to make a part directly on the table, I'm going to use some toe clamps to hold it down, now I just lost my Z reference. Now I need to re redo my Z reference. I'll, I'll have to do redo my XY reference anyway because I'm taking the part out and I'm putting a new part in. But if I need 20 tools to make that part, I'm going to have to stop in between each operation and reset the Z height every time. Reset the Z height. So you spend a lot of time during your tool changes. If you have a tool changer that is not conducive to utilizing that tool changer efficiency efficiently you may not you may as well not have that tool changer that will lead us into the next video where we'll talk about method number two of work offset and we'll start implementing and utilizing the machine's tool offset table and we'll reference the tools to a fixed point within the machine that never moves. You can see with method one of work offsets 
It's a very easy method to do. It's a carryover for manual machining, which is why a lot of people use it at first, because it makes them feel comfortable if they previously ran manual machines when they're moving to a CNC machine. But we can also see its drawbacks of time and, and having to reset tool offsets and work offsets a lot. In our next video, we'll talk about method two, which will save us a lot of time and come up with a permanent method for setting our tool offsets so that we don't have to keep resetting our Z height. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.